hilarious. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. You remind me of my brother, and my brother is named Matt, so that's even funnier. <laughs> okay, it's getting really uncomfortable. Morgan Summer, thank you so much for joining me on the Uniweb interview show. My name is Matt Whiteside. I got a new microphone today. Hello. I'm very excited to use it. <laughs> and I'm very excited to talk to you, Morgan. You're an author of a Gene Stone crime series and many more things as well. Please tell me. You've had a long day. I know this. Yes. Talk yes. About. How are you? How, how are you mentally right now? Exhausted right now. Uh, I'm a high school biology teacher, so of course I deal with uh, teenager and teenager attitudes for mm. nine hours out of the day. <laughs> I do what I want. Uh, yes, I get a lot. I get a lot of that. <laughs> so I'm, I've, I've have been on nine days spring break. So uh, mentally, I'm still on vacation, and I have yet to return back to reality. <laughs> Uh, that's but, like, yeah. that's like one of the most difficult things to do in the entire world is like come back mentally from vacation, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Well, that's the nice thing about being a teacher. We get thank the Lord for breaks. Is all I gotta say. I I, I don't know how people year round school do it, and if we had to, I probably would handle it. But I have to admit, the breaks are nice. <laughs> yeah, I know my sister's a teacher too, and she just went like to California and was watching the whales swim and like. She's going on to all these different countries and stuff on her on her breaks with her husband. And I'm just like, man, I should have been a teacher. I've got an education degree as well, but it just wasn't my path. So with that, I'm glad you I'm glad you still decided to come and join me on the show. I know it's been a, a long day. Um, I want to talk about Gene, Gene Stone crime series. You do you, you spend a lot of time writing in your in your break time when you, you have time off from school. It, it depends. You know, it depends uh, whether I'm motivated or not. This past nine days I was off, I spent um, pretty much my whole waking time with my daughter. I have an yeah. eight-year-old girl named Lily. And I put my writing aside uh, for the time being because it's been something I've been focused on probably for close to the last year that mm -hmm. I've been working on. Uh, I currently have written three books. I'm working on two, two others, three others. And so this past break, I was all, nope, not going to write. I'm going to take some time off. I'm going to spend some time with my family. But I try to write, um, you know, when I have break, I try to write sometimes during lunch uh -huh. um, just, just to get away from a cell phone because I have to stare at them all day for the kids. And, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't really – I know a lot of people, you know, do the the – you know, they schedule writing. I have to write 3,000 words a day. I have to do this. My main prior, my main job is still being a teacher. That is something that I actually love and enjoy and is my passion. So I make sure that that's there at the forefront. And then if I have extra time, then I'll get a chance to write. So That's cool. I mean, having your passion, being able to do that, and then having a creative outlet like writing, I assume that's what it is for you, right? It's a creative outlet. That you, is that what, what, what yeah. you got started? Yeah, I, I've always been in, in the creative arts. I'm not a sports person. I love to watch it. I can't play it. I can't catch a ball. I can't dribble. I can't hit anything. I tried because I had friends that were in into sports when I was a child, but I was the yes. <laughs> I was I was the one who I played the piano, I had private voice lessons, I was in choir, I was in band, I was in dance, I was in theater. So I was very creative in in that retrospect. And so writing was something I started about, I've always written, I've always had journals, I've always journaled my thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, but probably the last two years I found myself writing more as I was going through changes in my life to be able to yeah. deal with those changes. And so I, it was just kind of word vomiting on paper and word vomiting turned into something else. And so it just, it's kind of grown from there. But in the past year, my writing has grown and changed, and I find myself um, even looking at different genres to write uh, because my mind isn't um, – Gene Stone can be very dark, um, yeah. 
because it's about death and crime and stuff like that. And and sometimes it's nice to walk away and have little happy rainbows and hearts and stuff like that, just because it, it can be it can be kind of a downer occasionally. So. Yeah, I'm sure it can be exhausting living in that dark, dreary world, right? Yes, it, it can be. I, my background is in forensics. I actually went to school to be a forensic scientist. I've had pretty much a very adventurous life from one side to the other, but it didn't work out for me to be in forensics because I met the love of my life and I married him. And so he was in the Navy and it was go follow him or stay here. And I went, well, I'm going to go follow him because <laughs> that's my husband. And so yeah. I worked for the court system uh, for about eight and a half years, working from home and, and raising a daughter and and just having adventures. I lived in Oregon and Washington and Mississippi, and then he retired uh, two years ago when we moved back to Texas. So this is actually I always wanted to be a teacher because those who can't do teach, <laughs> so right. I wanted to teach forensic. <laughs> um, uh, but that you know, and so it. When I moved here, I got into teaching, and then as I got into teaching, I found myself writing more, just in general, because it was something that I, I, I picked up, you know, some just little hobby thing. So, yeah. So, how long from creation of the idea of Gene Stone to fruition did it take? I mean, and I want to know. So, what are the what? It's it's called the Gene Stone Crime Series. You have one book is published, mm -hmm. right? The second one is on its way out. Mm -hmm. The third one is finished, but it's in editing. No, the second one is in editing, but it'll be out in August. The third one I'm currently writing of the Gene okay. Stone. And then I have the Young Adult Series book that that first one is finished there. So I'm writing another one for the Young Adult, another one for Gene Stone, and then something that's way out of my league with kind of romance, which is it's actually just fun right now. So I'm not really... I'm not looking to make that anything other than just a fun outlet, I guess you can say. You write a lot. I mean, that's a, <laughs> so you talk about you don't have, you don't like set us out of time. That's it's like what six books. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And how long was is that an eight year period or is that what's the time period? Um, Gene Stone came to life, uh, started coming to life in April of last year. I worked at a different school district, and my I had a, a assistant principal. Uh, we were talking about passions. She was she was just like, oh, what are you passionate about? And I saw oh, I'm really passionate about forensics. It's something that I really like. It's something that I stay up in knowledge. She goes, you should write a crime series. And I just started laughing at her hysterically because I thought she was just crazy. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, and she was like, no, I'm serious. And I was like, yeah, I'm a teacher. Who has time for this? Like, I barely <laughs> have time to sleep and spend time with my family. And, you know, I just kind of ignored it. But on the way back to my classroom, it was one of those, well, what if I had nothing to lose? Mm. You know, it was like, well, let's see what can happen. And six weeks later, the first book was written. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Is, how, how long is the book? Is it a, it's a full novel. It's right? about 70,000 words. So it's not oh. like massive, but it's not right. novella size. So it's kind of at that cusp with me crime you, if you fill in too, if you have too much filler it gets really boring and for yeah, it's me gotta stay it's suspenseful right and tight yeah you have to have like whoo uh, whoo ah, ah, and then you know finish out the novel <laughs> so you know <laughs> so yeah it's it it was um i finished the first one actually on the way to disney world I was taking my me and my husband and daughter were going to disney world and we stopped at our hotel for the night and i finished writing that there and then I started writing the second one when I was in Disney World. <laughs> and wow. um, and that one took about three months to write because it was a little bit more intricate. It has a little bit more forensics in it. So I wanted to make sure that my timelines look good, that stuff that really what you're seeing in the book could really happen. And I didn't sure. want it to be so far-fetched. So the research alone was six weeks worth for, for finishing up research. But I finished that one in about three months. And then wow. the third one took two weeks, the th which was the first of the mystery series. I, I have an eight-year-old who loves to write. Um, she wants to be an author someday. And she's like, Mommy, I want to read your book. I love you. You're eight. No. Like, they're, no, it's not appropriate for you. It's like bloody and gory. It's um, the first one is uh, called Stranger Among Us. And it's based off an individual who's very Ted Bundy-like. And... Oh. 
Yeah. So, um, I did a forensic report on him in college. <laughs> that I'd... well, he was known as the deliberate stranger, and so stranger among us. That is where that comes from, and so wow. um, it it's based on uh, on a little bit of his character of a gentleman named Mister Smith, who's kind of this deliberate stranger, somebody who blends into the background. It doesn't make a lot of ripples but is this Rico Suave type of guy that can charm people and you come to find mm -hmm. out who he really is. And He's so I told my little character. one, I was like, no, you can't read this. Well, you can read this up to, to up to about chapter 10 and then you can't read anymore because it gets pretty graphic. So she said, well, why don't you write me a book? And, and I said, oh, you know, I told her, so oh, Lily, Lord, I have, like I've got time, you know, I've already written two books and she's Kids like, want everything, don't they? Just right? write me a book, mom. <laughs> <laughs> write, me, write me a book. And two weeks later, I wrote the first book in the Mystery Club series that I'm writing. And so that's something um, that I like to do for fun. It's it because it, it doesn't have to be very exact, which is nice. But it's also nice that I can write something for her that she can read because she's super proud of the fact that I published this book so much that she took the book to school and hid it in her book cubby. And I didn't know she did that. And I had to tell her to bring it back because she's in second grade. And I do not, I do not want to get in trouble with the parents. <laughs> so My child sweet. was reading about a dead body. Oh, Lord, I'm missing. this is not where I want to go with this one. So it's the, uh, best. the mystery club is I'm, I'm actually having her help design the book cover for it because I want her to be just as much a part of it as I am. Because if it weren't for her suggesting that I write it, it wouldn't have come to I, I wouldn't have probably wouldn't have thought of it, honestly. Are you uh, self-published? Are these self-published books? No, I am with a company called Undiscovered Publishing. It is an okay. indie company out of Houston. So I have pub um, the first two, or well, Gene Stone currently is with Undiscovered. Uh, Mystery Club, I haven't, again, it's something I would like to do and we'll see if that comes to flourishing. But right now, I can't put too many more irons in the fire or the fire's just gonna blow up. <laughs> Right, yeah, it's getting too hot. <laughs> it's getting too hot, and I've got too much. Um, like I, like I told you earlier, um, testing is coming up for the state of Texas, and my focus is my kids and getting them prepared to be ready to to pass this test that they have to take uh, yeah. to graduate from high school. So, um, for now, writing goes on the back burner, or, and it kind of has been on the back burner since the first one come out uh, came out in February, and it'll come back, you know, when I'm done with school and I can be home and and really have that time to devote to it. Yeah. So. Well, I think it's important that you, you're able to take that balance because you can, I mean, it's, it's easy to take something that you love and cherish to do and let it burn you out if you don't. Cause I mean, like writing is, is a, a fun, enjoyable pastime, something you enjoy doing, but if you do it so much and it becomes this thing that you have to do, then it's like, forget it. <laughs> and, and I've had to find that line, honestly, um, because I have kind of just um, thrown it to the wind when I first started. Like I said, writing came in a difficult time um, for my family. We were going through some family issues and writing was my way to escape, um, to mm -hmm. be able to deal with some of that that was going on, um, which was beneficial. You know, it was beneficial at the time to be able to put my thoughts on paper and to be able to um, find that a, you know, find that ability to be able to, you know, distract myself a little bit or take myself away from what was going on. And while good at the time, the side effects of it were me not spending a lot of time with my immediate family because right. I was dealing with my, with my own issues. Um, cause I have adult ADD and anxiety and I was diagnosed last year with this. And that was something um, difficult for me to swallow being you know, almost 36 years old, like, you gotta be kidding me. I don't have 80, 80 is for, for four-year-olds and five-year-olds, not for, yeah. not for 36 year olds. And it was, um, it, it, it was a really tough pill to swallow for me to finally, um, admit that I had a mental health issue that needed to be handled and needed to be under control, or I wasn't going to be very good for my students, for my family, for myself. So, um, writing actually, it actually did help me be able to learn how to refocus um, and to put my brain more at ease instead of always it, like doing this. So while it's been good for me too, I've also been able to step back since the beginning of this year and focus a little bit more on my family that time that I missed out with them to begin with.
That's so. wonderful. Yeah, writing can be super therapeutic, especially for those crazy thoughts that just run through your head all the time. Yeah. Well, I love just getting to write the craziness out. Yeah. Because once it's out, then you can get somewhere. But it's like it's gotta be it's gotta come out somehow first. <laughs> it does. And when I got um like I said, I finished the second one last year. And so when I went into storyboard editing um at the beginning of this year it was actually kind of a tough pill to swallow because I was actually seeing some of my manic my manic episodes that I was going through, some of my issues that I was going through, my extremes, um, yeah. and telling my writing where it was going. And it, it was an eye opener, like, wow, I didn't realize I was really bad off during that time and that I was having um, some issues. And, and, and I'm really not embarrassed to, to, to talk about it. I was at first, uh, but I, I, my, even my kids know that I struggle with ADD. So when they say, oh, you know, teach, I, I'm, I'm having trouble sitting still, I'm having trouble focusing, I, I, I completely understand. I understand what it's like. And so it's, yeah. it's nice to have that relatability and in, in it's nothing to be, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, I finally yeah. broke down and told my family about it. It was something I kept very secret. You know, apparently I had been going through it for many years, but I just thought everybody was that way. You know, I thought everybody was just really this extreme, but it's apparently like, that yeah. is not the case. And so, no. um, but writing was a way to save my soul when it came to that. And so like I, um, changing a little bit of genres and writing this kid's book or writing this young adult book for Lily and then kind of writing this romance is kind of just a fun, different thing to write. Um, it, it's been nice to write something a little bit more positive and set a little bit more dark. Um, Gene Stone yeah. to Trinity River Killers is really dark. It is incredibly dark. And <laughs> I'm hoping that's probably going to be the last dark one I write. I would like to still continue the series, but I don't want it to be so. It's got to be like an uptick. For it. it has to be for me not happy so to speak but more just a mystery you know suspense yeah, yeah, yeah. alfred hitchcock maybe a little bit but less blood less guts less gore less dead bodies it, right visually preceding that so for that's, me that's, that's something that i've had to accept too is that it's something for for me for for my sanity and stuff that i need to make it a little bit more <laughs> I think it's important. I think it's people. important as a writer that we grow that like that though, because we like not even realizing that we're like killing people off in our books. Like we're actually killing things off. We're killing things off in our own mind that yeah. we have to like we have to get over and accept and move past. To and that's growth to be like, well, I'm done with that stage of my life now. Let's move on to something better. And there's nothing wrong with feeling happy no. and wanting to write. That. <laughs> that's good. No, it's not and and I'm glad that you know if. At first, I was really nervous. You know, I was like, oh, Lord, you know, if I don't write this. But then I was like, you know, it, people change, and that's okay, and that's just part of life. And Jean Stone will continue. It just may not be where it started. She may, ch and she's probably going to change in her books, too. Even when I started writing the third one for her, which I haven't progressed very much um, because it is, it is very greatly based on some family issues that I was going through at the time and still currently going through. Um, it's not yeah. so much about, um, about dead bodies. It's about Jean changing through, through what she's going, what's going on in her life. Uh, some discoveries came to light last year about my immediate family and mm -hmm. it's not bad, but it was one of those like that you see <laughs> life changing. Um, oh my gosh, didn't see this coming plot twist. Woohoo. You know, <laughs> and it was. And it's been something that, you know, especially my, my, my mother is going through this and it was just, wow. So it takes a little bit longer for me. It's taking a little bit longer for me to write this book because I want to do it justice, but I don't know where it's going. You know, I, I don't know where it's going just yet. So it's about five or six chapters into that one. I'm about five or six chapters into the young adult and I don't know where I'm at with the romance ones. It's not very good with that one, but that was just that was just kind of like for some reason my hand and the pen are all working together, so it just kind of takes off. So I don't I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, it's like as we grow, the the characters grow, and we're able to write a little bit differently. And it's not really a rush. Like I used to think it had to be I had to I had to rush and get all this stuff out of me, or it wasn't it wasn't going to come out right. But in reality, it's like I'm able to grow with the character and, and whatever happens it happens and it's in the time that it needs to that's that's character development what uh gene stone is going through right i mean she's developing into a whole different person 
Well, you know, I had, when I got into this industry, I didn't have any expectations. One, I've never been in it. Two, I don't even know anybody who's ever published a book. Like this was told, when I told my family I was published, I was going to publish a book. They looked at me like I said, I have horns growing out of my head. They were like, what? What is it? Monster. Yeah. What? And my whole family has been very shocked at the fact that, that I do this. But everybody's been very, it's been, it's been very accepting of it. It's not like they're ashamed or anything. They just were, where does, the, where does this come from? Where is this coming from? And it was just, you know, I told, I've told them the story numerous times. It was just something that I did. Um, because it's, of the material it, in the book, right? Well, they knew I was in forensics. So it's that, that's not like a, that's not, not like a new thing. But my dad, um, you, you know, I'm pretty, I'm very close to my parents, especially my mother. I'm very close to my mother. And she knows me like a book. But when I told her that I wrote this book, she just was like, it was so out of left field. She just didn't see it coming. She was like, what? You What? And I said the same thing to my dad. And my dad was all, huh. Kind of like when a dog gets his name called, he just kind of turned his head and looked at me like I was a little crazy. Mm -hmm. But he just got <laughs> down, he, he waited until the book came out. I, I didn't show him anything beforehand. And he read it and he was like, I'm, he's like, I'm very proud of you. He's like, you did a really good job. And that means a lot coming from my father because my father is very sparing with his, with his um, compliments when it comes to stuff yeah. like that. Not that that's a bad thing, but it just means a lot more when he, when he says that. Sure. And my mom, you know, anybody that's an earshot, I, we went to the dealership on Friday and she's like, my daughter's a writer. So like, God, mother, please just Aww. stop. Like I'm over that's in the wonderful. corner like. Like we're over, we're not superstars. We're not, we're not, you know, singers. I don't want to be in the front. I, I like being back here behind the book. <laughs> like she's all talking to this guy. Yeah, she wrote this book. And, and I actually have a copy in my purse, mother. I'm so sorry. I just want to <laughs> go. I'm over there like, please stop. But I mean, I'm. it's the same with Lily. Lily will tell everybody with an earshot that I, that I wrote a book. And, you know, to me, it's, it, it, I wrote a book. Great. I, I got something out that I that I'm happy to put out that I was happy to write and happy to be a part of. And the same thing with book two and the same thing with this mystery club and the same thing. And honestly, if past these three, I never publish another one, then I will feel like I have been successful because yeah. I'm not I did not grow up going. I'm going to be a published author my whole life. This was something that was another chapter in my book of life. I've been a military wife. I've graduated from college. I've lived in three, four different states. Uh, you know, I, my life is just, you start going through it. It's just, even my kids are, wow, you have a very adventurous life. And I have, I've had a very wonderful life. Even yeah. if there were roadblocks, I've had a very wonderful life. So I don't feel, I, I, I'm definitely not, sad if anything i've learned uh, to grow a little bit thicker skin because definitely when the reviews started coming out that was that was a little gut check on that one and and that's okay i'm not money i'm not going to make everybody happy so i've just learned to accept that you know and that. yeah right <laughs> more money more problems <laughs> You know, and and being able to be assertive and stand up for myself and know exactly what I want and not refusing to settle for less yeah. than what I believe is right. So if, if Gene, two, Gene Stone 2 is not up to par when it comes time to publishing, then it gets pushed a little bit longer. And I'm, and I'm OK with that. I, I'm not proving anything to anybody. You know, yeah. I'm not trying to people that put out 20 books a year. Great. People that put out one book a year, great. People that don't publish, great. People that are self-published, traditional, hybrid, indie, whatever. Yeah. Whatever works for you is what makes it is what works for you. Well, and I was I gonna just, say, like, what it sounds like you do through your life is you just experience whatever phase you're in to the fullest, and then when it's over, you don't mourn it as you don't cry about it, and you just move on to the next thing, right? It's like because it's, that's life. It's healthy. You that's, you yeah, can't take it with you. You, right. you, cannot, you can't take it with you in the long run. And so if anything that my parents have instilled in me is that you you live life to the fullest and you don't put it in material goods. You put it in life experiences. And that's yeah. and I try to live life to the fullest. So when it's time for me to go home, you know, and I'm on my deathbed there, there's no regrets. There's yeah. there's no there's no regrets, baby. You know, there's no. Yeah, there's no. There's no regrets when it comes to that. And so uh, I'm, I'm proud of what I've done. Uh, you know, again, people, some people are going to like it. Some people are going to hate it. 
it, that's every book in the world. You right. know, that's every book in the world. I every piece I, of art, every everything ever put in front of another human being. Exactly. How many people think <laughs> Mona Lisa looks just like awful and sits and says, you know, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, same with music and art and theater and whatnot. We can think that you know, I, I think Harry Potter is a great book, but then you can ask somebody three people over and they go, I absolutely just hated that. Yeah. Why? 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 It's just, uh, but again, yeah. It's you know, the, it's, we have no control over what other people think. It's like we can only control what we do. However, however anybody else perceives us is none of our business, right? It's just if it's light, if it's if you're enjoying it and it's lighting you up, do the dang thing, right? My dad said assumptions are like assholes. Everybody's got one, you know. I mean, right. so <laughs> they're all good. <gone. laughs> and that, and that's and again when I first got the coupler, and I, I haven't gotten like one stars. They've been three stars, and 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 they, it was some things that I learned along the way, and it was some things that happened. The editor didn't do his job when it came to the book, which was something that wasn't my responsibility, but it was just something that happened. And then the book came out formatted weird for some reason. It was uploaded, and it just things that were technology base or whatever or out of control that I had no control over. And trust me, I'm a control freak. And at first I was <laughs> peeved. And then I was like, I can't do anything about it. Yeah. I'm I fix I'm fixing the problems. That's why right now um Jean Stone is is not available currently because I'm doing an emergency edit to get her back up to where she should be. And yeah. either and I'm honest. I'm very honest. I said, look, basically shit happened. You know, I balls were dropped and we're I'm fixing it and it's going to come back. And most 98 percent of people are like, that's really mm -hmm. get that great. You know, understandable yeah. things happen. And then you get the two percent. They're like, what's she not perfect? <laughs> yeah. yeah, not even close. And so but luckily, the writing community that I have found on really on Twitter, I um, I started an Instagram but here in probably the last six months, Instagram has been really harsh for me because it's such a numbers game there that, yeah. you know, you get 25 people following you and the next day 30 unfollow you because they're trying to have these just obscene numbers, which I mean, is great. If that's really, if this is a popularity contest, congratulations, you won the award. Um, <laughs> but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking yeah. for that. I'm looking for connections in a community and so when I came over to Twitter, which I swore I never was going to do, I was like, nope, not going to do Twitter. And I found way more of an acceptable, accept, acceptable community over there who, when I said, when I was like, vented my frustrations, everybody's like, it's okay. I've been there. I've had a bad editor. I've had a bad former. It's okay. It's okay. And everybody was like, this is not the end of your, this is not the end of your career. Right. And so it was nice having... 10 people who were positive and for every one person that wanted to be negative about it. And so I was like, okay, I feel better about this now. And it's just a learning experience. And so when Gene Stone two comes out that things will be a little bit different and hopefully that'll work like a little bit more of a well-oiled machine. I want to ask about the publishing company. You, you, how did you find them? And you said the, something went ha happened with the editing. How did, how did you go about finding the undiscovered, uh, Publishing is that what it's called? Yeah, it's Undiscovered Publishing. It, originally, it was J. Smith Publishing. It's it's a gentleman out of the Houston area, which is around where I live. He actually found me on Instagram um, last year, and he offered me a deal for Gene Stone, and I was happy with it because I retained all my rights. I didn't lose any of my, which was a huge thing for me. Yeah, I was not willing to sell off my rights for ten years. Um, the other thing was I pretty much had complete say so over everything that happened. So I got to veto everything and gave me a fair share of royalties because let's be honest, I had no time to, to publish this on my own. And I give right. it to people who do is that is a really long haul. That's very time consuming. And as a teacher, I just don't, I get summers off. I mean, come on. I, I this is gone on. I get summers off. I get two weeks of Christmas, a week of Thanksgiving and spring break. That's not enough time for me to be able to do all that and to step into industry that I had knew nothing about other right. than I had done my research about what I was looking for, avoiding vanity, avoiding, you know, hybrid and all of that. And 
you know, he, he gave me a deal that it was, it was a, it was a long shot. So he, um, the editor came from them and it was, um, it was a ball dropped on, on the editor's end. It wasn't a ball dropped on my publisher. It was a ball drop on the editor. They just decided that they were going to get what they wanted and they were going to do a crappy job in the process. So mm. of course that person no longer is ties with the company and, and that's fine. And the other thing with the formatting, something happened between the computers talking to each other and we never figured <laughs> out. Seriously, something happened in the upload. We uh, it was yes. the same document. Everything was working good, and something happened in translation. I mean, I've I, had that happen too with uh, KDP. It's weird. It just and that's what it was. It was KDP that that became the problem. And so, you know, it was at first I had a heart attack, and I was like, oh my gosh. And then afterwards, I was like, this is my life. If you know, if everything was perfect, then something would have to be wrong. If there wasn't some blimps, you know, then yeah. And, and that's just because that's life. That's life. And, that's where the character and enjoyment comes in. And, you know, and without that's sadness, life. there can't be really joy. So, you know, it, it, two will be out in August. Hopefully the young adult will be out next year. My goal, honestly, even if there is kind of a goal, is to maybe put two a year out, one from each series. That is pretty reasonable that I could be able to do that comfortably without feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, as the, you know, the the young adults pretty easy to write. Those don't really take that much time for me. I mean, I'm a high school teacher and I'm writing about kids in a high school. There you go. Yeah. You know, you got your subject matter taken care of. It's really not, it's really not too far fetched. Uh, but Gene Stone takes a little bit longer uh, only because of the character development and the story. So luckily I'm caught up <laughs> currently yeah. I'm caught up for now. We'll, we will see what the, what, what the future holds. I, I, I try not to look too far in the future. I kind of just take it one day at a time. So, are you <laughs> using that free write that you uh, won? Is that what it's called? Yes, yes. Actually, my daughter steals it way more than I do right now. How did you win that? Um, so, um, there is a an amazing indie author named Debbie B. Welch on Twitter. Oh, yeah. I interviewed she, her. I've... Okay, she is amazing. Um, she is. A, I don't know. I don't know her personally, but I've been able to, to like talk to her about some things going on. And she has just been right as rain. Like I've just been really, really fortunate to have met her and hope yeah. one day to actually meet her in person because she's just that awesome. Yeah, she's she was, she was doing a, 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 a giveaway for it. And I had just saw I, her, her profile had just popped up like three days beforehand. And of course I had scrolled through to look at her and I was like, man, she's pretty cool. You know, it would be something I really would like to follow, you know, to just to kind of, you know, kind of a mentor, not, I don't call her my mentor, but I kind of look up to her because she's been sure. in this game way longer than I have. And then I was on my way home. It was a, it was a Friday. I was on my way home and she had messaged me on Twitter. She was like, check my blog. And I was like, huh? <laughs> it was one of those things like, why is she messaging me? Like, she's like up here and I'm like over here. And I mean, I, I read it and I was just like, oh my God, I never win anything. I, was, I don't really don't. <laughs> I really don't. Really <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, oh my God, I won this. And so it, it, it got here and I actually like it. I have not had a chance to really sit down and use it. I'm, I'm, uh, I write for a life coaching magazine as for fun for a friend of mine. And yeah. so when I write the little articles that I do for her, I will write on there because it's just really easy to be able to do because you can sync into the cloud and it uploads to their post box as well as to oh, my wow. Google. Um, but my daughter, Lily, is really, she just, Invented. she wanted a typewriter. She really wants one of those old fashioned typewriters. And I said, well, you know, when we get around to it and then we have this one now. So she's, she likes it. That's she what writes. I started on. I uh, I remember that comp that contest. I entered too, and I remember reading the blog post and seeing your name, <laughs> and being like, <laughs> "I wanted that." <laughs> Who does it? I, mean, I was I like, just... "Oh, congratulations! I'm so happy for you." <laughs> <laughs> well, don't feel bad. I'd probably been in the same way if I wouldn't have won. But it was one. I, and I don't yeah. really enter a lot of giveaways. Like it's just yeah. not something I, I I do very often. But it was one of those, like, I had actually looked at getting a free write about six months ago, but it was just not in my budget. <laughs> I mean, they were just, being honest, those things are super expensive. And it yeah. just was not in my budget at the time. And so when I won it, I was like, well, hot damn. <laughs> so that will be, uh, because I handwrite all of my books first. So all of my books are in notebook. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh my god i remember i did that for like the very beginning and trying to transcribe it afterwards you who, trust me you... there was definitely sometimes i was reading my writing and i was like was i drunk when i wrote this what yeah, is like, this saying is... i just don't understand um i'm old school you know i'm I, i'm definitely old school i grew up with no technology as a child you know so cell phones You're didn't happen homage, huh? until Till college, you know, internet happened. Dial up, you've got mail was when I was 15 years old. Yeah. So writing, when I was in college, I, I hand wrote all of my notes. I hand wrote all of my papers before I transcribed them onto the computer because my brain just, that's just the way that it works. Yeah. Then I spent working in the, the background industry, working with courts for nine years where I was transcribing records all the time electronically. So I was taking one off one screen and transcribing it to another. So I was typing sometimes in the excess of 200 record file transfers a day where I, I was very close to typing about 100 words a minute. I mean, so my hands, I have, carpal tunnel, I have carpal tunnel in both hands um, because of oh, it. Wow. So for me, I started handwriting and I actually, um, I vocally transcribe the book. I read yeah. into Dragon and Dragon trans and, and puts it for me. And yes, I know it probably takes way more time than it should, but it's just the way that I work. I can't, if I have this laptop, which I'm talking to you from right now, if I have it on in front of me, I'm going to be doing anything other than writing. I'm going to be on Facebook. I'm going to be on Instagram. I'm going to be on Twitter. I'm going to be reading the news, looking at the stock markets, planning a trip to Hawaii and doing anything other than actually <laughs> writing. So yeah. if I take my books with me, I don't have an excuse for not for not writing. And sure. so uh, it, it's, I, I have a pile of them in the floor right now and I carry two with me. And I'm pretty superstitious, so, and I'm not really a superstitious person, but it was just something that I started when I started writing. Each new story has its own new notebook that is separate yeah. from everything else. And so, and it, I'm, I'm threatening to get a fire safe just so I can put them in there. So if something should ever happen to my you house, still have them. Yeah. I still have them. Um, but good. yeah, I, I get a lot of that. I've, I've told that to a lot of people and they're all, you are insane. Why? in hell but you do why do you make your why do you make it twice as hard and it's just the way that my brain works yeah you know, maybe i may little, progress but currently i haven't a little bit of insanity is okay you know it's that's, <laughs> it's a healthy thing at least you, at least you have dragon to transcribe it because that's i mean i didn't with the first one and it was a very it took me almost two and a half weeks and that was every day for about four or five hours a day transcribing and i said no i'm not doing this again because it was just so long and so i bought dragon for the second one and i was able to vocally transcribe i think in about three days give or take because it has to learn the way you talk and i'm very southern so my writing is very southern so there's lots of y'all and gonna and that's just the way that i talk and that's the way that i write so how does it work with dialogue i mean you have to go back and edit the all the dialogue and and format um, that way, right? Yeah. Well, I just have the very basic one, so you can actually tell it period, space, and to restart. So you can you can talk about it with that. It learns dialogue as you go along, and you can put more of a southern dialogue, so it will hear y'all and hear gun, and it actually does put it, but you know, talking in a microphone for three days, eventually there's, uh, and then I have to go back and, and edit it. There's a couple of times I'm like, what the heck does that say? That doesn't even make sense. And it's because it's transcribed a completely different word than what I actually said. So I don't know. I'm kind of hopeful maybe one day I'll just sit down and just type everything out and then I'll just bypass it all. But we'll see for now. That's just not happening. Since I've, since I've switched over to the typing, I realized that I don't like typing out, um, anything besides if i already have it planned out in my head because if i'm like brainstorming i do not like putting it down on the computer because it just turns into you know because i feel like it's too permanent there i think that's why i hand write everything first because i i do outline i do outline the whole book and i outline each chapter at least a synopsis so that i know what to expect maybe i'll put some names in there something that i can refer back to but when i handwrite, it's a rough draft i mean it's plain and simple it's a rough draft so by the time yeah. I transcribe and I start transcribing, then I'm able to add a little bit more each with each time that I'm going through it. 
um, to be able to add more to the story than what I saw at that point. So at that point, maybe I didn't see the the field of sunflowers, you know, maybe I was just seeing a road. And so I'm allowed to bring right. a little bit more visual into that. But then by the time I hit storyboard editing, you know, those extra 20,000 words, I've just clipped about 10,000 in storyboard editing. So I'm not sure there's any method to my madness, but it just, it just works for me. And I, yeah. I know a lot of people ask that question of me and I wish I could provide them some better insight to why this works. And I just wish I knew that answer and I don't. You just um, got to find what works for you, right? You just got to find. Yeah, you, you really do. I mean, I appreciate that people want to know because maybe it might help them in the long run. But, you know, if I wouldn't necessarily recommend handwriting, then vocally transcribing and then storyboard editing. It takes a, about two solid months to get through that process. And that's if you're diligently every day doing that. And well, teaching. Yeah, I just don't always have that time. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Well, Miss Morgan, the, your students call you Miss Summer, Miss Morgan. Summer. Yes, I go by. I, well, Miss is usually the the term that I that I get called, but uh, Miss, Miss Summer. Miss. Yeah. Miss summer. So some uh, Miss Summer is usually what they what they call me, or Hey Teach, or Hey, or You we'll Teach. Or, yeah, I get. I've gotten that too. Hey, Yo you Teach. Oh, or somebody. <laughs> what was one they call me? Oh. Hey, bro. I, no, I ain't your bro. Please don't call me that. But I'm pretty laid. I'm pretty laid back with my kids, and I think that's you know for me, I, it's it's less of a formality. I really don't care necessarily what they call me as long as long as it's not profane. You right. know, as long as it's not <laughs> profane, I really I would assume. I really <laughs> don't honestly care what they call me. You know, as long as they're learning. You know, and and I get kind of the rough bunch because I teach um, the 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 ones that have taken it before or the ones that are new and trying to, you know, make their way through. But it's just, it's something that I, I, I like something I like and I enjoy. And this is my, my career is teaching. And when that is over, then it may switch to writing, but it, currently I have no, I have no plans on quitting teaching within the next decade or so. That's just something that I like. Well, I know the world needs some good teachers. That's for sure. Thank you. National Teachers Day, isn't that October or something? October uh, 10th? Isn't there a, what is, today is National Awkward Day. So I don't, I mean. National Awkward Day? Awkward Day. I swear I saw that on Facebook. I could be totally wrong. So I, I no, I, hold on. Let me pull, I swear that's the case because it was a joke. Um, somebody sent me the joke and I was like, oh, what? You know, there's there's National Taco Day, and you know, there's always I, I something. I know about Awkward Day. That is my day. <laughs> day. Yeah, National Awkward Moments Day. Celebrate awkwardness. I've okay, never... here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sit here quietly for, and just like really <laughs> awkward silence. I'm gonna cut out this part so nobody knows about it. But we're just gonna sit here like, okay. <laughs> I can't sit in silence. That's not I don't ready. Know. Staring contest. Just do it. Come on. <laughs> We're in contact. Awkward day. Ready? <laughs> ready? Set. Go. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. You remind me of my brother, and my brother is named Matt. So that's even funnier. Okay, it's getting really uncomfortable in here. You can stop me. I know. That's, it's awkward moment day. Come on. <laughs> go, for it, go for it. It's okay. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I wish I would have known earlier in the day. Well, I like I said, I didn't even know it until somebody had sent it to me um, just as a joke. They're like, it's National Awkward Moments Day. I was like, I have those at least 10 times a day, especially as a right. teacher. <laughs> yeah, they're great. I love them. So, Morgan, the the book isn't going to be out again. Like Gene, the um, Gene Stone series is pulled off for just just a little bit. It'll yeah, be back. It's, uh, it's, you, yeah, it'll be back, back this Saturday. It'll be back. Okay, Saturday. this Saturday. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. And um, the next one will be out in the next few months. Mm-hmm. 
Awesome. And we can get all these on Amazon or in Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble. Mm-hmm. Yep. Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Awesome. Is there anything you want to tell the writing community? You want to leave the writing community with uh, words of wisdom or words of not wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing that I would say, and the the two bits of advice that I I definitely hold strong to, the first one is write for yourself. Don't write for an audience. You're always going to find people that want to read your writing. But if you do nothing but write what you think other people want to read, you're going to be very disappointed. So make sure that it's something that is you, something that you're happy with, something that you're passionate about, because that will come through in the pages. If it's something you force yourself to do because you think it's, you know, oh, well, I'm going to write, you know, fiction, fantasy or whatnot because of J.K. Rowling, because it makes money, you're going to be pretty disappointed when you find out that you're not writing for yourself, you're writing for an audience. And the other thing is something that I tell my kids, which is do the unknown and then do it again. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid um, to go out there because the worst thing that can happen is you fail. Okay, then you get back up and you go at it again. Mistakes are part of life. Don't be afraid of failure you can't be afraid to fail. And I have to tell my kids that because some of them may not pass the class or pass the test and have to retake it again. That doesn't mean anything other than it's a learning experience. Okay. You failed. Now what are you going to do next? Yeah. So that's my, that's my only two bits that I definitely hold on. That's beautiful. I love the saying that, uh, there, there is no such thing as failure to the committed man or woman. It's you just get back up every single time, you know? Yeah, because it's part of life. We're all not going to be able to be, you know, Albert Einstein, J.K. Rowling, geniuses, Carl Sagan, whatnot, no matter how much we want to be, (laughs) because we're not Carl Sagan, we're not Albert Einstein. We are Matt and Morgan, and that is, that's who we are, and we're, we're here for a reason, and we're made different for a reason. So, you know, I don't ever try to be somebody else other than myself, and I won't apologize for who I am. Beautiful, yeah. Be the youest you you can be. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, Morgan Summer, thank you so much for coming on the Uniweb interview show, where every day is awkward day. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate. I really appreciate your time. And uh, if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. I'm gonna put links to, um, in the description of the video to all your work your website and everything so people can reach out to you on Twitter or Facebook and harass you for doing such a great job at writing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope you have a wonderful night. Okay. You too. Thanks. <laughs>